Hey everyone, this is the last video of the webcast deception series. So we'll be covering the expert lab today. And here I have the lab that is exploiting exact match cache rules for webcast deception. I already have added the scope in my burp. So I'm just going to start browsing it. Let me turn it off. And let's log in with Twina and Peter. Okay, we are getting the request. That's nice. One thing you're going to notice is that we don't have any API key that is showing up in the page. Like in the labs we did before, there was an API key and we were supposed to cache that and get the key for the victim user. But now you must be wondering, okay, there is nothing getting cached, nothing sensitive getting cached. Then what's the point of exploiting web cache deception here? But you shouldn't trust the UI. <laughs> if I capture the request, the get my account, send it to repeater. Let me maximize the screen and send the request. And if I scroll down, you will see there is something else this time that is the CSRF token. And this is a hidden CSRF token, but in this lab, it's going to be helpful for us because CSRF token is unique to a particular user. We know that. So we're going to cache the CSRF token for the victim and see what we can do with that. Okay, great. So in the previous video, we have tried a lot of methods and especially in the last video, I showed you the raw approach of web cache reception. So if you already watched it, that's very nice because I'm going to keep that idea in mind to explore a little further in this lab. Okay, so one thing we knew that if you know there is no sign of caching, for example, as you can see, there is no sign of caching over here, means you have to find some other file or directory that might be getting cached. So from the previous videos, we know that the static directory was getting cached. That is basically giving us JS or CSS file or image files. So anything under the resources directory were getting cached. But in this case, we are seeing that not even this resources directory is getting cached. It's not showing us any sign of caching. Otherwise, we would see some caching header over here. So look at the multiple request and still you won't see anything. Means you have to find some other file. When you're testing this in a real life application, you have to go through all the endpoints, basically clicking on everything you see in the web application. Okay, now I want you to give one more point that sometimes robot.txt file also get cached. So let's try to access it. Robots.txt send the request. And we are getting x cache miss means there is a sign of caching over here. If you send this request again, it shows hit. So now we know a particular file that is getting cached. Now this is going to help us to cache the my account endpoint. I'm going to go back and send this again, repeater. Okay, so our first step would be to find delimiter. You can do that by using burp intruder by passing it a list or you can try few delimiters manually. If you don't know what delimiters are, you can watch the video from the i button. So let's try a few things like question mark. Okay, this seems to be working. How about semicolon? As you can see, semicolon is not giving us a caching header. It means semicolon is not the delimiter here. Let's use hash. And this is not working either. So question mark is working for us. It means we can use this in our payload. Why this is working? Because the cache server is normalizing it. It thinks that, okay, robot.txt and robots.txt with a question mark is the same thing. It's basically going to normalize it and give you the same response. And this is helpful in exploiting web cache deception. Okay, let's move on. Now we have to use some particular segments like uh, forward slash or dot segments to see if we can cache the my account endpoint. Keeping this delimiter in mind, let's go back 
to the my account endpoint. Okay, so I'm going to add forward slash robots.txt slash dot dot slash dot dot slash. It may work or it may not work, guys. Let's send the request. And it's giving us 404. Okay. So when you have a particular file that you know is getting cached, you can try putting that file as a prefix or as a suffix in the path which you want to cache. So I added it as a prefix here, but it didn't seem to be working. So I'm going to remove this and add it after the my account path like this. dot dot slash and and the delimiter you will notice that it is again saying for for not found but we do see the caching header over here which indicates that we can maybe cache the my account endpoint but we're not totally done yet we have to do a little bit more work so what we can do, we can maybe encode this percent to F percent to E and then again percent to F let's send okay so we have to add something more let's try adding a question mark here I'm going to remove this one Let's send this request. Okay, this is giving us a 200 OK response, but there is no sign of caching. So not very useful. Let's add a semicolon. And semicolon is giving us sign of caching, means semicolon is also getting normalized by the cache server. Great, so we can also use question mark here just to make it a little bit more different so we can deliver the exploit to victim. Send the request and it says xcache miss. If we scroll down, we can see our CSRF payload and it is getting cached if we send this request again. Great, so now we have the payload. I'm going to change this to AJ and I'm going to copy this URL and now it's time to deliver this exploit. At first, I thought we were just supposed to get this CSRF token of a victim to solve this lab, but oh, no. We have a few steps to do. Let's first get the CSRF token and then I'll tell you. Okay. Store and deliver the exploit to victim. Let's open this up. Okay, we did saw administrator, but we are redirected to the login page again. Let's just send it a few more times. Weird. Okay. Uh, maybe we can try accessing that from here it still shows Weiner mm, I think it was AX before right no one we have to get a fresh payload let's say AK and well before when I was trying to solve this lab I was having the same thing again, like it was redirecting probably because of invalid session. So in that case, you have to try delivering this exploit again and again to make it work. Okay, let's send the request. And now we see administrator, that's a good sign. 
and here we have the CSRF token of the administrator. But we are not done yet. The goal of the lab is to change the email address of the victim. So basically we have to change the email address of administrator user in this case using the CSRF token. So let's capture the change email request, which is over here. So I'm going to type something random. I don't know what did I just type. <laughs> Anyways, let's capture the request in Burma. Here we have the change email post request. We're going to send this to repeater. Turn off the intercept. And we're going to copy the CSRF token we got for administrator. Replace the CSRF token right over here. And email will be same. We have to deliver this exploit to victim. I'm going to tell GPT to create the POC for me. As I'm using the community edition right now. Otherwise, you can just use the CSRF POC from the professional version. Create a CSRF POC. Okay, we got the POC over here. Let's copy it and go back to the exploit server where we're going to replace this with our POC and then store. And then deliver exploit to victim. Let's change the email address to something else. Winner and And it's all the lab. Okay, great. That was a nice one. And we have completed all the labs of the webcast reception. I'm really happy about it. Hope you enjoyed this series as well. If you've been making notes all this time and focusing on what's going on, you don't need much of an extra resource to understand this. I tried to break it down for you as much easier as I could. Thank you for watching this video, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh,